Okay, guys, welcome back to the shit show that is us. Um, for those of you that are new, welcome. I was going to say thank you. For those of you that are new, welcome. welcome. For those of you that are returning, thank, thank you. you so we much. We do not deserve you. We do not. Before we get started, yeah. shout out to my sissy, um, Miss Carolyn, or Carrie is what we call her. She got me and Natalie yes. both drunken true crime glasses. So that one says drunken true crime. I know, I know it's hard to tell. see it. With the drinks in it, but... But this is my favorite. Be a bitch and stay alive. Yes. It's amazing. Thank so, you so much. Cheers. Cheers. So today we are actually traveling to kind of our home state. You're like, it's not like where you were born or anything, but like... It's in our home state yeah, now. Yeah, it's in our home state now. I feel like I said that one time. I was like, yeah, we're from Tennessee. And you're like, um, no, I'm not. I'm from Georgia. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. So we are traveling to our home state. So this is actually a case that really struck us, I would say. We followed it very, very closely. Um, it's very close to where we live. Mm -hmm. um, it's where a lovely woman was absolutely brutally, brutally murdered. Yeah, by her asshat boyfriend, allegedly. <laughs> but before we get into it, my name's Natalie. I'm Erica, and this is Drunken True Crime. Two. Before we get into it, we do have a few disclaimers that we have to say, and then we'll end up with the, like this legal disclaimer we have to say, but we'll go through it really fast, blah, so blah, listen blah. up. Yeah. <laughs> um, one, we drink. Two, we cuss. Three, we talk about true crime. Four, you might see us laugh, and that is because we are typically making fun of ourselves. Um, sometimes the asshat murderers in these stories, but absolutely never the victims. Okay, last disclaimer here, folks. The information provided by us in this video is for educational purposes. All information in this video is provided in good faith. The views expressed are our own personal opinions, and the details we provide are all alleged, and individuals are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So, what drink are we having today? Yeah, so we're having a Cosmopolitan. I literally texted Erica this morning, and I was like, I'm not going to drink today. And she was like, oh, okay. Like, two minutes in the house. She, like, pulled it out. I was like, I think I'm going to drink today. Well, I knew. <laughs> I knew better than to say, I'm not going to drink today. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go get some cocktails, girl. Yeah. So these are actually called On the Rocks, and it has that little penguin guy. Please sponsor us On the Rocks because <laughs> these are delicious. I yeah. This is the Cosmopolitan. I got, like, the spicy jalapeno margarita and, like, the regular margarita. Love them both. Yeah. We will be drinking that in the next couple of cases that we film. So. Yes. Yeah. So they are really good. We highly... Highly suggest you get it. Where'd you get them? You can get them from any liquor store, right? Yeah, I mean, I got them from the liquor store that you. Um, oh yeah. So literally, it's me. like the smallest liquor store right by my house. So I had you to can ask get it from them, anywhere. Though. I was like, "Where's on the rocks?" And they're like, "Right in front of you." Eric, I'm like, <laughs> "Cool, I'm blind." It happens. It happens. But um, with all that being said, grab your cocktails, jump in, put those headphones in if you have kids. This is not kid friendly. No. And lunch, lunch, lunch. lunch. <laughs> Let's, it's also Lunch. like six o'clock at night. <laughs> Let's jump into this case. Cheers. So the case we are covering today is Jasmine Pace. Also, she went by Jazzy. Yeah. So we might switch it up between Jasmine and Jazzy. So she was born May 29th, 2000, and she was a native of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So she's described as by loved ones of having been thoughtful, generous, and a very supportive person as well as a devoted aunt and a godmother. Yes. You'll probably, if you ever, like, looked at the, like, this case and just, like, pulled up some pictures, you'll see her with, like, a little girl. So like video. Yeah. Like, she was devoted to that little girl. Be still my heart. There's, like, this video of her singing to mm -hmm. her niece, and it just, like, ugh, like breaks your heart. She was, I mean, she was in that girl's life, which yeah. is what you want to see as an aunt. But yeah, absolutely. she was quite the animal lover. And had four cats of her own, all of whom she said to have loved as they were her own children. So she was a student and was studying at um, Chattanooga State Community College. While in school, she was also living at her parents' house since she was a full-time student. Jasmine had a lot of friends and a very supportive family. She was a normal 22-year-old girl. You remember trying to figure out, like, what you were doing during that time. Yeah, like, trying for sure. to live your life. Um, still trying to figure out. I, that's I'm literally doing. what I had in my script. Like, oh. I'm still trying to oh. figure out what I'm doing. Like, 10 years later, 32. <laughs> like most adults, uh, Jasmine adults. was... Like most adults... <laughs> Jasmine was on dating apps to find a potential date and eventually find a husband. Now, I will um, divulge this information. Like, Mark and I, I was 24 and Mark was 29. 
when we were it was like back in that back in that time when dating apps were like just on the market like just starting um we met on tinder yep and that was like it was still like the stigma of it like oh my god you're on a dating app yeah but let me tell you but it worked out it worked out but right now my girlfriends that are single yeah and talking about dating apps tough out there girls dude i believe i talked to david like so if you're new here me and my husband we've been dating since we were 16 years old and 17 16 yeah yeah one of those so anyways we already forgot yeah so it's it's been a minute um we've been dating for like quite a long time i guess we're married now but um so we missed that whole like thing we honestly didn't really date that much before we got together not intentionally like it just so happened right right um and we talk about it all the time like could you imagine having to go back out on the market now and absolutely fucking not i could not let me paint you a picture girl (laughs) because i had all of the all of the experiences one so this this guy that um I thought it was cute and we were yeah. dating a couple of times and I was like, it was shark week and I'm like, I don't have cable because I'm a cheap ass. Oh, so you're going go to hit I'm gonna cable. go to Absolutely. I'm going to use his cable. I was like, you know, shark week is, you know, this week and One I really most- want to watch it. And this guy was like, great, come over. I'll make you a dinner. We can watch it together. Yeah. And so I get there. His dinner is fish sticks. That you put in the <laughs> oven. I mean, it's kind of it it's kind of cute. Al- it goes play. along with it, but there's also a there's a theme. Here. But also, he thought Shark Week was like a code to like jump on me and maul me at the same time. Oh, then he just didn't know you well enough. Like, no, bro, you're not getting anything that I week, bro. Was literally, like, please get like, out no. of the way. Have, if you've ever been around Erica during the Shark Olympic week. swimmer, I can't think of his name. Is right. Is Michael trying to Phelps. yeah. Michael Phelps <laughs> is trying to be a great white shark right now. You need to get out your head out of the way. Yeah. He just didn't know you well enough. And good. Easy to weed him out. Oh, it was super easy super after that. Easy. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Great. We love that for you because we knew right away, not the man for you. <laughs> so now that we've talked about dating apps. Yeah. Anyway, so back to the case. <laughs> um, so she ended up meeting her. Okay. All that to say. Dating apps. So Jason was on a dating app and she ended up meeting her boyfriend, Jason Chen, on one of these dating apps. Now, Jason was also 22 years old and he went to the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga, so UTC. Then on Tuesday, November 22nd of 2022, I was about to say 2002, uh, Jasmine went over to Jason's house after leaving her parents' house. Now, Her family believed that she may have gone off to mourn a recent family death. Let's just be transparent here. Natalie, Natalie had a death in the family last week. So like it's kind of, she's kind of feeling it. Well, I'm trying to bring her up. So I didn't, I forgot about this part and I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. But it also was her grandmother as well. Hey. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a hard week. That's, yeah. We're going to get through it, guys. Yeah. That's why like if we're not like. I don't know. Got like facial expressions or if I'm not like super like bubbly. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard though. Yeah. So maybe you take, maybe you take this. Okay. (laughs) So she did have a recent death in her family, which was her grandmother. So like a bunch of her family that, you know, her parents' house, she was living in, she just up and left. Um, And her parents was like, you know, she's taking this really hard. Yeah. As one would do. Phone records show that earlier in the day, Jason and Jasmine spoke on the phone for one hour and 11 minutes. Jason lived on um, 110 Tremont Street. Once Jasmine got to his house, she texted her mother and brother saying that she was going to be staying at her friend Emma's house for a week. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. She, as soon as she got to Jason, she texted her mom and her brother that I'm going to be at Emma's house this week. Yeah. Emma lives in South Carolina. Right. I do remember this now. Which later Emma was like, she had no idea Jasmine was coming to stay with her when she hadn't planned a visit for her to come anyways. Yeah. So it was it was really weird. And her parents thought this was – actually, her whole family thought it was weird because that's that week was Thanksgiving. Yeah. And your morning, like your grandmother, like your – you. I know it's hard to be around family, but you want to be around family. Like exactly. It's a, like, and she was super family oriented. Yeah. Like, and so this like was like said. even more. Like this was very weird, very mm-hmm. out of character for her. Yeah, and that's what I have. It was out of the norm for Jasmine. 
Thanksgiving was only two days away, and she always spent the holidays with her family. Yeah. So after receiving a text like that, obviously, her mother and brother were confused. Now, she would never, like, nonchalantly say that I'm just not coming to Thanksgiving, and I'll be... (laughs) Did you like how I just, like, went over that typo? (laughs) But anyways, to the point that, like, so Jasmine had sent this text saying that she wasn't coming to Thanksgiving, and her family just, like, knew, like, she wasn't... Like, she was not just going to be like, oh, by the way, mom, I'm not coming. By the way, I'm going to South Carolina, and I'm not coming to holidays. Okay, see you, bye. Yeah, and what, she's 22 at the point. I'm 32, and I would still be terrified to send that text. I would just want to, I would still show up to Thanksgiving. Like, you just don't, I don't know. I just feel like it's just very, very out of the norm to her at this point. So, in the early hours on Wednesday, November 23rd at 2.15 a.m., Jasmine sent a ping to her location, like, you know, we do this constantly. Right. So she sent that to her mom. Um, but this text, unfortunately, went unnoticed. Um, the pin to her location shows that she was at the lofts in Tremont. Now, neighbors would later say that they heard a woman scream around the same time coming from Jason's apartment, but did not call the police. And so, just so you know, the lofts at Tremont is where Jason lives. Yeah, that's the same address. Um, yeah. So, like, this whole, this whole thing just... So very, very frustrating, right? So neighbors hear the scream coming from Jason's apartment. Yeah, it's called the bystander effect. Um, And I'll go into that. The bystander effect occurs when the presence of others discourages an individual from intervening in an emergency situation. So basically, you hear if you're in a group, you hear someone yell at fire or screaming or whatever, you're less likely Yes, because you think someone else someone is going to do, is it. Gonna do it. Yeah, because you think someone else is already called, so you don't want to do it. Like, yeah, it, it's a real thing. I mean, there's tons of there's studies tons of on this. Studies. Um, obviously, that's where they came up with the bystander effect, but it is a real thing. And unfortunately, to Erica's point, that's what happened here. Exactly. So no one called, right? No one called. No one called. Even though, despite multiple neighbor- neighbors hearing screams, unfortunately, no one called. And then on November 26th at about 6.52 p.m., Jasmine posted to her Facebook, and this featured a, it's now infamous, I feel like, this lingerie photo and several short videos with a caption saying, enjoying Thanksgiving with my baby. This is very out of character. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not in the norm by any means for her. So this obviously raised a few flags. And then after this was posted, several commenters, including Jasmine's childhood friend, Bailey Putnam, commented that this was completely out of the norm for her. Like, there's no way, essentially insinuating there's no way she would have done this. Right. Now, one commenter said, she didn't do this, y'all, while others said they felt the same. So I completely agree. Now, another commenter pointed out that because the lingerie photo said chat at the bottom, they may have been, it, like, it may have been saved to her camera roll, or it might have been, like, a private chat between her and a friend. Like, Explain on Snapchat. Like, if it has chat on the bottom and, yeah. like... You take a picture and you send it directly to that individual. Mm -hmm. Um, You've probably, it probably has like the chat at the bottom that you screenshot to save it. Yeah. Thank (laughs) you for explaining. I'm not a big Snapchat person. Anyway, so Bailey, again, Jasmine's best friend, suggested that because Jasmine has had tattoos done on her upper arm in recent years, that the pictures that were posted on Facebook during this time could not have been recent ones of her. So Bailey also said that due to the nature of the post, she would have set them to private. So again, not only is this super out of character, but it doesn't show the tattoos that she that, yeah. that she had when she she had like almost a, like a half sleeve yeah. on her shoulder. Yeah. So again, just red flags left and right. So remember Jasmine's friend Emma that lived in South Carolina, who Jasmine was supposed to be with the week that the social media post was strange. She called Jasmine several times, but she never got like a call back. She did get a text back, or she did text her and, like, begging her to please answer her phone. Yeah. Call her back because she knew something was wrong. Emma got a response, but it was from Snapchat. Sorry. <laughs> Coming from Jasmine's Snapchat account. Her response said, I need alone time. Give me a break. Dang. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. I would have been like, give you a break. Dang. Yeah. I would have just been like, like, I need time. Like, I need space. Like, uh, you well, bitch, something. you're not getting any space. Okay, yeah. I'm worried about you. I feel like if I said that to Erica, she'd be like, "Okay, well, I'm at your front door with this." 
<laughs> which is good <laughs> bitch i'm i'm at your back door i'm climbing in max yeah. is actually helping me get through the door at i the actually moment. have a key to your front like i'm just coming in but her family got a similar response from text but no one had not talked to her on the phone to see if she was okay which is quite alarming yeah so wait no one had actually talked to her on the phone no and uh, yeah they got text message back they got Red like flag. they Snow got Red like flag. snaps back from like snapchat and everything so in the story right now we know that jasmine was last at her boyfriend jason's apartment but family thought she was at emma's just wanted to kind of summarize where we're at yeah so now we're gonna go into jason's background so people close to jason said that he used to steal other people's phones and items from work and even creepier he also had a history of impersonating people online and that's about jason if you want to know anything else you can do your own research but we're here to we're, focus on other things. jasmine jasmine we're focusing and the on case. jasmine so on November 26, Katrina, Jazzy's mom, used the My Chevy, Chevy app to track Jasmine's car. Now, Katrina found that Jazzy's car was at Signal View Apartments on 900 Mountain Creek Road. Now, the car doors were locked and nobody was in the car. Katrina could tell that the driver's seat was moved very far back, which immediately set off alarm bells for her because Jasmine was only 5'2". Now, this is when her mom decided, I need to call police, mm -hmm. which, again, we're just red flag after red flag, just so many things out of character for her, for her, and then to get in the car and see this, I'd be alarmed as well. So when they arrived, Katrina reported to the police that her daughter, that her daughter, oh, Lord, her daughter, her daughter, <laughs> her daughter had been missing since November 22nd. On November 27th. 6.55 a.m., patrol officers responded to a call from Jasmine's parents and met them at 110 Tremont Street, Jason's, Jason's apartment. Katrina told the police that she had received a pin drop from this location sent on 2.15 a.m. on Wednesday, but she told the police she hadn't seen it until she scrolled back and re-looked at her messages. That's so sad. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart, too, because imagine Yeah, like now that, that we know what we know. Jasmine's parents went and talked to the neighbors and found out that Jason did, in fact, live um, there at those, those apartments in 210. Upon making entry to Jason's apartment, Katrina found Jasmine's driver's license, multiple credit cards, but did not find Jason or Jasmine. So how did she get into the apartment? The police let her in? The police let her in. Okay. Yeah. So later on in that day, Jasmine's family was asked to come do an interview at the police service center. Katrina reported that on 11-22, so November 22nd, Jasmine had left her phone or had left the home and a pin from Jace, Jasmine's location was dropped on November 23rd. Next, Katrina tracked the Chevy's location to Signal View Apartments on that My Chevy app. The My Chevy app shows that on 11.43 p.m. on November 22nd, the vehicle arrived at this location. So we can, like, everyone's pretty much on the same page that on November 22nd, the day that she went missing, that we, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we think she went missing, um, she was at Jason's apartment very late at night. Right. So technically, I guess we would think she went missing on, like, the 23rd probably. But, the like, the last, like, known whereabouts of her – was on November 22nd at Jason's apartment, where you can get 100%, everyone's in, on the same page, she was there at yes. this point in the story. Yeah, on the 22nd. Yeah. So on November 27th at 11.40 40 p.m., a search warrant was made on Jason's apartment. During the walkthrough of the apartment, the police found blood on the living room um, hardwood floor, bathroom grout, the master bedroom carpet, and blood spatter on the bathroom wall. Police also found cleaning supplies on the living room couch. Crime scene investigators also use Blue Star, which basically will show if blood has ever been cleaned up. Blue Star showed an extremely, extremely large reaction on the floor in the living room, bathroom, and bedroom. The evidence showed a very violent physical altercation occurred in Jason's apartment. Camera footage was also pulled from the apartment complex that showed that Jason Chin was walking out of the exit with a surgical mask and having a black fabric item wrapped around his right hand. Furthermore, video footage pulls from the local Walgreens showed Jason purchasing two bottles of peroxide and paper towels. So then on November 29th, Jason Chin was located at 1943 Ashburn Court, 
Nolensville, Tennessee, which is where his family, which was his family's home, three hours away from Chattanooga. Now, this is right outside of Nashville, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jason was arrested by Nolensville PD. Police said that Jason had lacerations to his right hand and feet, which indicated that he had been in a physical altercation. Now, Hamilton County Law Enforcement, which is, again, Chattanooga, Tennessee, secured a criminal homicide warrant for Jason's arrest after walking into his apartment and seeing all this blood splatter, all Mm -hmm. this evidence that had suggested that a homicide had occurred. Right. Now, the next day, on Wednesday, November 30th, police announced that they were considering Jasmine's case a homicide even before they were able to find her body. And again, this comes from what they saw in that apartment. Yeah. Yeah. District Attorney Cody Womp said during a press conference, our main concern is Jasmine and to find her. Womp then announced that she was pursuing first-degree murder charges. Quote, Jasmine has a voice through the state of Tennessee, through myself as district attorney, and we won't stop until we see justice in this case. On December 1st, the body of Jasmine Pace was found on Suck Creek Road in Chattanooga. Police investigators said that Jason's cell phone records led them to Jasmine Pace's remains on Suck Creek Road. An officer said that they had found a rolling suitcase caught up in a kudzu. What is kudzu? You know those, like, that green, like, leafy thing that, like, literally whenever it gets in any part of the woods, it, like, literally grows over everything and it covers all the trees, everything? Yeah. That's kudzu. And okay. you can't get rid of it. It's okay. like an invasive species. Anyway, sorry. An officer said that they were, uh, found a rolling suitcase caught up in kudzu there. Inside the suitcase, Jasmine was found in a fetal position inside of a trash bag. One of her arms was shackled to her ankles. A total of 60 sharp force injuries, stab wounds, and cuts were found on Jasmine's right side, shoulder, and her upper back. District Attorney Cody Womp said, and I quote, The fact that I have to say the word garbage bag and package while dealing with a 22-year-old woman who has friends and family that care about her is horrendous so katrina pace described her daughter as being the biggest and best part of her katrina gave the community a heartfelt thanks for their efforts in locating her daughter i will say when this happened there was a lot of coverage in our area Mm -hmm. about it that's all you like that's all you heard around Around the city and locally i mean it was on facebook everywhere everywhere i was getting messages from like friends and just like acquaintances that i know about this case and we shared it constantly yeah so a vigil was held in jasmine's honor on december 5th in which her family and friends spoke of what she meant to all of them now travis pace jasmine's father said and i quote Even if she's gone, her light continues through us to finish her job, to keep making it a bright place. So Jason Chen, who had been held without bond at the Silverdale Detention Center since his arrest, made his first court appearance on December 6th of this past year. Now, the officer who testified during this hearing said that there was a phone call made from jail after his arrest, which Chen said he wished he would have killed himself. Investigators said that cell phone records show he went to Nashville's airport shortly after Jasmine's disappearance, but his financial records show that he did not actually buy a ticket. Now, investigators also said that, and I quote, it was the largest amount of blood he had ever seen at a crime scene. Now, Katrina Pace reportedly had to be held back by her husband, Scott Bean, to prevent her from lunging at her daughter's accused killer, which I don't disagree. I don't. I I mean, (laughs) I, 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 I would do the exact same thing, Katrina. Same. And I quote, he's going to have to face me, she told her family, which, good. Yes. He should. He should. He absolutely should. So a judge set a bond at $5 million. If Chen makes the bo- that bond, he must remain under house arrest with geographical restrictions. He also had to forfeit his passport. Good. Family and friends in the courtroom were shocked to hear he was getting bond in the first place. After the hearing, friends and family took to Facebook. Bailey Putnam, remember her? She's one of Jasmine's um, childhood yes. friends. Um, she said... The absolute rage in me prays that this man faces the absolute max sentence for the rest of his life. And despite how hard it is to be at the hearing today, this was a win for Jazzy. And we will continue to fight until Jason Chen is brought to justice on the evil that he is. So Jason Chen's next hearing is set for February 23rd, 2023, which is coming up. So we will definitely keep you guys updated. But yeah, Natalie, final thoughts. One, I love her friend Bailey. Yeah. So let's just give a round of applause for Bailey. 
give her a round of applause for her family too. Actually, let's give a round of applause not only to her friends and her family. Let's give a round of applause to Chattanooga Police. Yes, yeah. And also Chattanooga community, actually, too. I was going to say, everyone For reaching around. out and, like, actually just jumping on this to help find her. So, yeah, like, round of applause for them. This is a very sad case, though. But, yeah. I mean, just, and it it's was so hard brutal. To, it's, it was so hard to get through, yeah. especially, like, talking about what they found in that suitcase. All that say, though, guys, I'm so sorry this was depressing. Yeah, that was a um, rough one, but. The Pace family, if you watch this, we hope we somewhat – we're able to give it justice, even though yeah. we're not like the typical true crime yeah. um, podcast, YouTube channel personalities. Yeah. Um, we tried to do it as much justice as we could. Yeah. And I would say that um, we watched it very closely in your family and your friends and Jasmine's legacy touched us really hard. And that's it why did. we wanted to cover it. And we took a few weeks to cover it. And that's because we wanted to do it justice. And Erica spent so much time and effort. Um, putting that I mean, together. It's, a, it's a it's a hot mess. I understand my script is a hot mess. But no, like, no, no. But like she really like we were originally going to shoot this a few weeks earlier and we decided like, no, like we want to make sure that we're doing it justice. And that's just kudos to Erica because she felt so touched by Jazzy's story. And um, we just we hope we did it justice and we will be there fighting with you um, in February and every bond hearing. And every- yeah. Yeah. Please stay tuned to our Instagram. We'll post all of those online. Any petition, anything that you can do to help the family, um, help get justice for Jasmine, we will post it. So please, please, please stay tuned. But until next time, guys, be a bitch bitch and stay alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers.